What's up guys? Welcome to FPL Today and Happy New Year as we get into the team selection video for Game Week 21 as we get on into the second half of the season and the year 2022. But before we see how I did in Game Week 20 and how I'm going to attack Game Week 21, first a quick word from our sponsors, Spitch. Spitch is the ultimate fantasy football manager game that's just hit the market. This game is available for those of you in the UK and Ireland for everyone over 18 years of age. It's a fantasy football manager app that lets you build your team, collect points and battle it out against other managers. Play for free, compete against your friends in communities and have a chance to win a share of up to £70,000 on a weekly basis. That's right, there are weekly competitions not just season ones, so every game week matters all season long. Various competitions are available on different pitches, and once again, there are free games to play. Click on the top link in the description and download the app for free, and let's get back to the video. So guys, do go and check out Spitch for a bit more of a fantasy football fix, and let's get on to how we've done in game week 20. And as you can see, it wasn't brilliant, and I was expecting a drop in rank. We had ended game week 19 on 13,183rd, which was fantastic. Right now, as I'm recording, we are currently sitting on 17,258, which is still in the top 20k, which is a lot better than I thought it was going to be when Tuesday's games had ended, because of course, Liverpool had an absolute disaster against Leicester. Salah missed a penalty. He was my captain, so I managed to double zero points. So very disappointing from Liverpool in that Leicester game. And the main reason I was kind of holding Salah was because I thought they could do something quite good against Leicester, and that has backfired. Fortunately, the players I brought in, one of them was Dennis, who did manage to get a goal for Watford, which is fantastic. Antonio getting an assist as well, my front line providing 12 points, which was much needed. Unfortunately, Dubravka isn't playing and neither is Ramsdale. We've got a full Arsenal bench, so we had to rely on no goalkeeper. But Foden is the one that came through. And if you watch my previous video, I was concerned about Foden's game time after, of course, he was taken out the starting 11 because of a mishap with Pep Guardiola with his behavior outside of game times. So Foden coming in with a goal is absolutely fantastic for me. As I'm recording, Cancelo is on a clean sheet as well. So hopefully he manages to keep that. We do see ourselves currently on 38 points which would take a minus four down to 34 because we made two transfers. We do have Matt Loughton playing tomorrow. So fingers crossed there that Burnley can do something against Manchester United. If they're as bad as they were against Newcastle, it's possible. Mount did also come in with an assist, but he also got a yellow card. So that's four points for Mount, but at least it's some more points on the board. And unfortunately, James did get injured, but Chelsea didn't keep a clean sheet anyway. But that is now another issue in a side which, with postponements and injuries, is getting quite hard to manage and doesn't look anywhere near as healthy as it did if we look back at like game week 16 or 17. That being said, I can't be upset with how I've done. Maybe the major loss for me is not still having Jared Bowen. I did have Bowen. I think I took him out because of a postponement and that's why Mount is in. But if we'd kept Bowen, we would have got 14 points this game week, which would have really helped out with our overall rank but if you thought this was a mess of a team now wait until you see the team selection for game week 21. so on the plus side as i'm talking there is no postponements so we should have a full starting 11 and a bench that is about as good as it gets because unfortunately a hell of a lot of my players are playing against each other we start off with the defense of Dubravka in goal against Southampton I'm hoping they're starting to get a bit of fight to them Newcastle and potentially there's a clean sheet here although Southampton also have shown a bit more about themselves recently it's either that or Ramsdale who has Man City and do I think Man City aren't going to score I think that's unlikely there's a chance I do risk Ramsdale just for save points if I really don't think Dubravka can do anything but Dubravka is in goal at the moment We've got Trent, James and Cancelo with Chelsea, Liverpool and Arsenal. Yes, Chelsea and Liverpool play each other. So right now, Chelsea versus Liverpool isn't exactly a fixture that I know what I want to happen in. Because of course we have James and Mount, we have Alexander-Arnold, Jota and Salah. So that's a very difficult one there. I'm maybe going to keep Mount for this game, but James with the injury might be a forced transfer out. 
which means I could move off of Chelsea defence and look elsewhere. We'll probably keep Trent in though. Cancelo with Arsenal away. Not the best fixture, but not the worst. I think Arsenal are definitely a better outfit than they were previously, but I still think Man City are a bit too much for anyone in the league at the moment. But Cancelo hopefully can do something magic, which he has done plenty of times this season. And then we have Loughton against Leeds away. Very hopeful for something here because Leeds haven't been that great this season so far. Looking at the midfield, it's a midfield five of Foden versus Arsenal away. Hopefully he's back into the starting 11. I don't think the transfer can really be used there at the moment. We've got Mount with Liverpool at home, like we've already spoken about. And then of course, Jota and Salah. Captaincy armband is on Salah at the moment. It's going to be a hard pick. There's a chance I put it on someone like Foden or Cancelo. But hopefully Salah, before he goes off to the African Cup of Nations, can do a bit of a madness against Chelsea. It's a big game. He's a big player. Maybe something can happen this game before we transfer him out for Son. There's a chance I transfer him out for Son anyway in this game week, but we only have the one transfer. And if James is a force transfer, then that might be the move we make. We have Smith Rowe still in the side at the moment, but of course we could change that to someone like Dennis against Spurs or Gellhart against Burnley at home if we think that Gellhart's going to start. Then up front, we have the lone striker of Antonio with Crystal Palace away. Hopefully Antonio can keep ticking over with some points now. And then the bench, Tierney is unlikely to start for me, really. He did show some very good attacking play recently, but I just don't think that's going to happen against City. Dennis could come in for Smith Rowe, I think. And then, of course, Gellhart is also a possibility to come into the side. Just, I fancy Man City to beat anyone at the moment. Of course, anything can happen in football. We just saw Leicester beat Liverpool 1-0. But at the moment, I'm backing kind of C here to get results. So I think I made it pretty clear what my transfers should be. It's likely to be James out for a defender that I think has some clean sheet potential over the up and coming game weeks. Who that is, I'm not too sure of just yet. There's a chance I could double up on City. There's a chance I could try and save money so I can bring in some more big hitters. The likes of Lukaku potentially interesting me now. As well as the likes of Son and Harry Kane because I think Conte is starting to get what he wants out of that Spurs squad. In the comments down below, do let me know how you did in Game Week 20 and what your transfers are for Game Week 21. Ask any questions you want to ask and me or someone in the community may get to answering it. Also, do check out Spitch as well to get your fantasy football fix on mobile. I've been JNO. This has been FPL Today. And remember, it's all about the game. Mm -hmm.